Professor Lewandowski. Oh. May I call you Lou? <laughs> yes, please. Okay, now your critics have been yes. very prolific in coming up with puns to do with your name. Yes. Let me read a few examples. Oh, good, good. Lou Paper. Yes. Ludicrous. Yeah, nice. Lunatic. Yes, very good. Toodaloo. Toodaloo. Mm, nah, not so good. Looney Tunes. Yeah. What's wow. your favourite Lou pun? My favourite Lou pun? God. I guess Lou paper is pretty cool. I like that. It came with yeah. cartoon as well. Oh, I'm sure it did. I'm sure it did, yes. Now, that's, that's, you know, actually moderately creative. And it goes to show that these people do have some cognitive ability, you know, except they're using it to, to come up with puns rather than dealing with the problems that the planet is facing. Puns can be quite powerful as a communication device. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So, what are we going to do about Cookie or John Cook? Cook the books. Cook the books? Idea. Oh, there you go. Cook, of course. Cook the books. Cook the data. What else do you cook? Cook a PhD? Have they done that? <laughs> I don't. Well, they will after this video comes out. Oh, absolutely. Okay, good. Did you poke ants nests as a child? No, never. Just as an adult? Never. Only in my scientific capacity, never. I wouldn't even do it as an adult. I think ants are terrific. But then there are other people that do need to be poked. You published a study linking conspiratorial thinking with climate science denial. Yes. Now, the response from conspiracy theorists was to argue that they weren't conspiracy theorists by proposing a whole bunch of conspiracy theories. Yes. Did you anticipate this response? And if not, why not? <sighs> No, I didn't anticipate it. Uh, actually, I didn't. Uh, didn't and if you not, trust why your own not? Results? Well, it's a very good point. I think I was, I was at the time still um, slightly uninformed about the full spectrum of human nature. I, I, I think I learned more about human nature after I published that paper than I, than I did in you know fifty years or so prior to that. Uh, so no, I didn't anticipate that. And in in many ways, I. Um, uh, regret that because my initial response to the backlash against my paper was, was one of humor. You know, I thought this is pretty funny, actually. Um, and, um, yeah, and it wasn't funny at all, ultimately, because, um, you know, the humor wasn't reciprocated. According to conspiracy theorists, you planted the idea of consensus in my head, which led to the 97% really? Consensus paper that is that the right? Point. Oh, yes, please. I'll take credit for that. Planting something in your head, that's, hey, I never knew I was capable of that. So what's it like being the puppet master who runs the world? <laughs> Gosh, I wish somebody was paying me a bit more money to do that. <laughs> By denying that you're in a conspiracy, aren't you confirming that you are in a conspiracy? Because that's exactly what a conspirator would want people to think. Oh, absolutely. Yes, totally. Totally. I'm in a conspiracy. I'm, I'm a puppet master. I'm implanting things into your head. And, uh, and Al Gore is fat. So, you know, there you have it. You have the reputation of being a dictator with your PhD students. Oh, good. That's not a question. I just wanted that put on the record. Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> what makes you angrier? Science denial or students who fail to reference their papers. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that's the, there is little daylight between the two. <laughs> I can personally attest to that. Good. <laughs> thank you very much, Lou. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, that's funny.